Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video we are going to deconstruct another shader so you can use it in your own games. And what shader are we doing today, you ask? Of course I'm talking about the famous Mario 64 wavy painting effect. Yeah. So remember, the first step is observing and inspecting what we are trying to create. For that I've prepared this simple scene so we can get the details at our own pace. Ok, let's see. I think we can agree that we will need our trusty sine trigonometric equation to get some wave behavior. And I'm talking about the full equation with amplitude, frequency and phase shift. We also want to animate effects, so let's use our versatile time built-in function to animate one of the properties of the sine equation. And lastly, the effect seems to have a radius of effect, so using the equation of the circle might be a good idea. The ultimate goal will be to combine all of these ideas into one useful equation. So like in previous videos, let's put our ideas in the upper left corner for reference. Let's start with the sine equation and the time effect. As I've said, we need to animate one of the properties of the sine equation, so let's try each one out in the Desmos graphing calculator to find out the right one. First, the amplitude. Mm, it's certainly doing something similar, but I feel we can do better. Let's try changing the frequency now. Mm, now. Definitely not the right one. So how about the vertical shift? <laughs> of course not, I did that on purpose for a dramatic effect. So the only option available seems to be to animate the phase shift and it looks super nice, great! The next step will be to use the circle equation, but first let's see how its properties work by moving them around. Ok, that seems useful. It seems that if we change H or K, we have control over the center of the circle. Handy. Now if we change the radius component, the circle becomes larger or shorter. I think that's alright. So what can we do? I think that if we combine our sine equation with the circle equation, then we may have something cool in our hands. I propose the following new equation. Calculating the sine on each component of the coordinate system, x and y, elevating it to the power of 2, and solving for the radius, and the entire equation will be as follows. Great, let's implement it. Now this works as expected, but what if we have limited resources at our disposal? We surely can be creating high density polygons for the shader to work. So if we need to save up on precious resources, there is also the option to fake the effect on a texture using UV displacement. This is a new challenge that I love you to solve. Don't worry, you already have all the important components to solve the problem, but if you want a little bit of help, you can search up the concept sombrero function. No, really, I'm not joking, that's how it's called, sombrero function. Another hint I can give you starts with Adrian and ends with Boeing, and that's it. Of course, all of the files will be available at my GitHub page, so you can download the shader and the sample scenes so you can analyze them at your own pace. Thank you very much for watching this video until the end, I hope you find this information useful. And remember, if you want to help the channel, it's super easy, a simple smile is more than enough. Don't forget to have fun, be happy, and see you next time! Bye-bye!